If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com Welcome to the Dan Bedan Show on TruthRadioShow.com and we are discussing the Gospel of Mark uh, Comprehensive Study of Chapter 7. So if you missed chapters 1 through 6, they're in the playlist here. Also, we cover the entire book of uh, Matthew and also uh, the book of Jude. So please check them out in our biblical playlist here. So yeah, this is a very interesting um, chapter, I should say. Uh, lots of context involved with Matthew 6. So, like we always like to do, guys, uh, when we start off, uh, biblical study approach, we pray for wisdom and understanding, so please uh, pray with me. Uh, Yeshua Jesus, we pray to you and ask for forgiveness of our sins we committed today, our personal sins, and we ask you to make us whole before the Father. And Father, we come before your throne to ask you for divine intervention with the Holy Spirit to teach us, to help us understand this book of Matthew chapter 7 today and all the context involved in it today to understand every aspect in there, all the context of what you're trying to teach us today. In your precious name, amen. And now what we do, guys, is we read the scripture in this context. We don't just read right through it, which will take uh, maybe a couple minutes. We don't do that. We read it in, in full context. Context is key. That's what a lot of our ministries lack doing. They'll read a couple of verses here and there, then skip to another chapter. We don't do that. We read the entire thing in its context. And you won't even find this in most churches. So let the scripture interpret the scripture. So let the Holy Spirit interpret. If you don't understand it, just keep reading and it'll interpret itself. Or let the Holy Spirit interpret it for you. Plain and simple. So let's get on with this um, awesome study here. So we'll turn your Bibles to Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 7. I keep saying Matthew because we did a long uh, 28 chapters of the book of Matthew. So uh, pardon me, guys. So Mark chapter 7, and I prefer to use the King James or the Geneva or something older uh, other than the newer translations, which uh, are disastrous, plain and simple, because simply because they removed thousands of words, uh, entire full verses, and changed important keywords, changed or deleted uh, important key words. So anyway, um, we left off chapter 6 here, which was an interesting chapter here, a lot of spiritual warfare and all that. So uh, Jesus, like, um, <laughs> yeah, like going back and forth across the sea, uh, basically uh, healing people and helping people that were sick and everything else. So uh, a lot of work he's done in chapter 6. So now chapter 7 now continues on. It says, Then they then came together unto the, him the uh, Pharisees, and certain scribes which came from Jerusalem. So you get these scribes and Pharisees that came unto Jesus, right? And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, so they, that is to say, with unwashed hands, and they found fault. So now the tradition of these, you know, the, the Jewish tradition is you had to wash your hands first before eating the bread. That was a tradition by, set by them, right? So for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they're washing hands of oft and eating not and holding the traditions of the elders. So this was the eldest tradition that before you, you know, ate the food, you know, ate bread, you had to wash your hands. That was a set rule set by the Jews and it was a holding of the traditions of the elders, right? And now the apostles, they didn't do that. They just went and grabbed the bread and started eating, right? Without washing their hands, right? And uh, when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as washing of cups, pots, brassels, vessels, and other tables, right? So, you know, washing the pots and pans, basically, you know, the dishes. So then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, you know, asking Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? So, Jesus and the apostles, right, they're up there. They're grabbing some bread to eat and everything else, right? So the Pharisees and the scribes came right up to Jesus, saying, listen, like, why are you letting your apostles eat the bread and not tell them to wash their hands? Basically, why are they not following our traditions of the elders? 
So Jesus, he answered to them and said, Will hath Isaiah the prophesize of the you hypocrites, as it is written? So the prophet Isaiah prophesies of them being hypocrites. And he goes, as it is written, right? Now again, I have to point this out, guys. I don't mean to change subjects, yeah. As it is written, right? So you got these people today's world, right? They say the scripture wasn't written back then, and, uh, you know, um, they try to mock the Bible, you know, the Old Testament and all that. The Old Testament goes back thousands of years. And uh, today's churches, right, they will, they'll tell you to read Matthew through Revelation, and that's it. And they say, well, the Old Testament it really don't matter no more. That's what they actually teach, right? So if that's the case, right, if you're one of those people that think you know, it's just the New Testament, that's all that matters, yeah, well, how, how would you know what he's talking about then? How would you know what the prophet Isaiah prophesies? How would you know what it meant when Jesus says, as it is written, right? He's referring to the Torah and to some of the books of the Old Testament that was written before him. So this is what I mean. You need to study the scripture in context. You need to read Genesis to Revelation, not Matthew to Revelation, Genesis to Revelation. Regardless of what your church is telling you. See, the Jewish people today, you know, they're Old Testament. You know what I mean? Uh, the Torah part, right? And they, you di disregard the New Testament. Now, the modern-day Christians, right, they disregard the Old Testament and the Torah, which the Torah is the f makes up half of the New Old Testament, you know what I mean? And they disregard the entire New Test Old Testament and say, oh, just obey the uh, New Testament. Well, the thing is, that's why we don't follow religions, guys. Because we need to understand the entire gospel. That's Genesis through Revelation. So if you didn't know anything about the Old Testament, right, how would you know anything about this? How could you verify any of this stuff? Jesus says, as is written, talk about the scripture. And obviously, yes, before this is before the New Testament was written. So how would you know what he's talking about? How would you know what the prophet Isaiah talked about if he didn't know the Old Testament? See where this whole, you know, the whole dairy of that breaks down altogether? of these modern-day churches uh, disregarding uh, the Old Testament. Because if you disregard the Old Testament, right, you wouldn't know anything about the prophet Isaiah. You wouldn't know anything about what he's talking about. This is this is why it's very important, guys. I, I wanted to point that out. So anyway, um, the Pharisees, again, the Pharisees and scribes, um, drilling Jesus, say, hey, how come your, your disciples, according to the tradition of the elders, uh, they're not you know, obeying it? to wash your hands, right? And they're eating bread with unwashed hands. And Jesus said unto them, Well, has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written? This people honoreth me with their lips, but the heart is far from me. So he's saying the people there, you know, you people, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is not there for me. Basically, it's like a vain repetition, like just vain words coming out of your mouth. And that's what false prophets do all the time. You know, false, false prophets, they'll proclaim Jesus. They'll, you know, say, I cast out demons and everything else and all that stuff. But the thing is, they're doing it for money or something like that. They don't care about Jesus. That's half the blokes you see on TV. The, you know, 700 club people and uh, the televangelists. It's a big business. Their heart's enough for Jesus. So anyway, yeah. And uh, so, how? and he goes on, right? Jesus now is grilling them. Grilling the, uh, the Pharisees and scribes, right? And he says, how about in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men as washing pots and cups, and many such as like you, the other things you do. So, you know, the Pharisees and scribes, right, that drilling Jesus, right? Hey, you, know, you and your apostles are not following the uh, tradition of the elders, right? Jesus turned around saying, listen, yeah, <laughs> we don't follow traditions of man. We don't follow the commandments of man. We follow the commandments of God. And that goes to another, you know, and this goes to another situation too, where you got the modern day churches, right, the dispensational churches out there telling people, oh, well, you know, the Ten Commandments are just for the Jews. Jesus abolished them. The Bible says no such thing. And if you watch my Matthew series, you know what I'm talking about. And every time this comes up, I'm going to keep pointing it out. 
The Bible says no such thing. Jesus, even after resurrected, he stated vividly to keep the commandments of God. None of the Ten Commandments were changed or abolished. They're not just for the Jews. They were already law before they actually became the Ten Commandments. They were just reiterated as the Ten Commandments. And this is the hypocrisy of the modern-day Christian, right? They'll say, oh, uh, yeah, well, you know, we don't have to obey them. They're just for the Jews. And, uh, but we're grafted into God's Israel. Well, if you're grafted into God's Israel, this is a spiritual kingdom, not, you know, the nation Israel. If you're grafted into it, then you have to what? Follow God's rules. Like in Deuteronomy, when they talk about, right, when you come into the land, the, the land that uh, the Lord God has given you, right, you have to leave the abominations of the nations you came from and follow the laws of God. So in the spiritual sense, we are a part of grafted in spiritual Israel, right? So therefore, you have to follow the commandments. Jesus followed them. The apostles followed them. The, the believers followed them. The early church fathers followed them. And they were laws, I mean, like they were all plastered at every state capital across this country. Up until the late 1980s when the, the atheist groups had, had them removed. For hundreds of years in this country's history, they adorned our nation. So yes, the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments, are, and also Jesus' great commandments as well, which is a summary of the Ten Commandments. Either way you look at it, the commandments of God are still valid. So, and now Jesus grilled these people, right? Saying, in, uh, in vain you worship me, teaching for the doctrines and commandments of men. But laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men as washing the pots of pans and many other such like things you do, right? And he said unto them, Full well yet reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. So he's saying, you're, you're, you're sitting here grilling us because we don't wash our hands to follow your elders' traditions. But yet you people, the scribes and Pharisees, okay, the Jews there, you're rejecting the commandment of God to keep your own tradition. And he goes on to say, for Moses said, honor the father and mother. What's that? That's the fifth commandment, right? And whoever curses the father or mother, let him die a death. The death. The fifth commandment. So why would Jesus be reciting this if the Ten Commandments were abolished? Simply because they weren't. To this very day, you have to honor your father and mother. That's God's law. It's not changed or abolished. So he's in that grown of the Pharisees and scribes say, yeah. But you say, if a man shall say to his mother, father and mother, it is Corbin that is to say, a gift by whatsoever that must be profited by, he shall be set free. He shall be free. And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. So making the word of God of non effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things you do. So if you can understand what's going on, right? Religion. I don't care if it's Catholicism. I don't care if it's 40,000 different denominations of Christianity. Don't care if it's Baptist, Buddha, or whatever, or um, you know, Jewish, whatever, Kabbalah, whatever you want to call it, right? Judaism. They're all traditions of men. We're supposed to follow God, not a religion, or their traditions, or their religious dogma, or tr doctrines of men of demons. Sound doctrine is the Bible. We follow God. We're not a religion, guys. So Jesus drew, just drilled them on your traditions, right? Your traditions are the elders and the Jews, right? You're violating the commandments of God. But, you know, we're supposed to put the commandments of God in non-effect because of your tradition. So Jesus is like really wrenching into them now. And when he called all the people unto him, and he said, Jesus called all the people unto him, and said, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. So after he just got done drilling the Pharisees and scribes, right? Because they try to make an example of them. Oh, you guys are not oh, washing hands and obeying the tradition. And Jesus just let loose on them, saying, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you bu a bunch of hypocrites. So now after this, right, he called all the people unto him. They all gathered around him, and he said to them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. So he says, everybody here, listen. Understand me, okay? Understand what I'm going to tell you. There is nothing from without a man that enters into him that can defile him. 
but the things which come out of him, those are the, the defiling, the men, right? Now, this is, a, I want to point this out too. <laughs> this is a verse used, misused, misquoted, misunderstood, that's used to defend the eating of pork, which is a, you know, a strict rule against eating pork. And nowhere, shape, or form, pork was even considered a food. It's an abomination. That's what it is in the Bible. Jesus didn't abolish it. He didn't do away with it. He didn't make all food, uh, all the, um, the animals clean. Well, food is clean, but pork is not a food. Swine is not a food, right? So they use this verse right here out of context. This single verse, right, to defend, well, yeah, see, the Bible says it doesn't matter what you eat. It says no such thing. If you took that, in, you know, this one verse in con out of context, you would say, oh, yeah, well, it does sound like that. You could actually eat anything you want, right? No, that's not what it's talking about. So read it again. And he said, uh, he called all the people unto him and said to them, hearken unto me every one of you. In other words, listen to what I'm going to tell you and understand what I'm going to tell you, right? There is nothing from without a man that enters into him that can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man, right? And if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And when I, when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, right? So now, see, now with this is where they define. This is where the parables define. Remember I said, let the scripture interpret scripture? Very, uh, yeah, so now we take that one verse, right? That verse 15 here? Yeah. If you take that one verse, it sounds like you can eat anything you want. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you eat, it's what comes out of you, right? Now, this is how smart Jesus was, right? And the apostles, right? So now, they wanted, uh, you know, to know what this parable meant. He, they, uh, they brought him in the house, Jesus, uh, the apostles brought him in the house, and asked him uh, concerning the parable, right? And now, mind you, Jesus got to, uh, again, interpret what this says. Doesn't mean you can eat anything you want. It's nothing to do with that. <laughs> so, here we go, right? And let the Bible speak for itself. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? He's telling the apostles, You don't understand either. Do not yet perceive, but whoever, whichever thing from without entering into the man, it cannot defile him. Because it enters not into his heart, but into his belly, and it goes out the drought purging all meats. So he's not saying it's okay to eat pork. He's just saying in general, you know, you eat something, and he specifies food. You know, again, pork's not food. So out the drought means like you, <laughs> uh, proverbial talk, basically out, out down the toilet. You know what I mean? So. And then he said, that which come out of the man that defiles the man. Some, some fall from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, deaths, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lascivious, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. And all the evil things that come from within and defile the man. So, as you can see here, it's not really talking about food. It's a parable about, yeah, eating something, whatever. But it's nothing to do with that. It's nothing to do with saying you can eat pork. That's why it's, um, he, he speaks more on us. Because the apostles didn't really quite understand. And he gives more uh, definition of what he was talking about. He's talking about coming out of the heart. And the thing is, when you eat pork and stuff, guys, like, it defiles the body. Because it's no good for you. There's parasites in the food. Even to this day, we could cook food better than them back then, right? But it's still major parasites. Uh, pork is still the one of the number one, actually the number one cause of foodborne illnesses. It's unclean food for a reason. Yeah, I mean, they all saying you are what you eat. Yeah. <laughs> Pigs eat crap all day, so you, that's why you feel like crap when you eat pork. There's no nutritional value in pork. 
But he's talking about a whole different thing. He's talking about with the heart, okay? So basically, what comes out of you, when you go in your belly, right? It goes out your rear end, plain and simple, he's saying. But it's from within the heart of man, okay? And he goes on to say that men's hearts precedes evil thoughts. And if anybody here right now, okay, just says, well, I never did that. You're a liar. Every day, all of us are guilty of this. Some way, another line that you know, evil thoughts come out of our hearts, right? Uh, about committing adultery, if you see this good-looking girl or something, fornication, stuff like that, yeah. And, you know, you get mad at somebody in your mind, you might think, oh, it would be a good idea to murder these people, like an evil person, whatever. Or, um, you know, you know, see a bunch of money, oh, I'd love to, you know, uh, snatch that if I could get away with it or whatever, you know what I mean? Or you co covet after something, right? And by the way, these are things in the commandments, right? Notice that? You know, notice that? Murder, it's the sixth commandment. Thou shall not steal is the uh, eighth commandment. Yeah. Thou shall, shall not covet is the tenth commandment. Yeah. Check that out, huh? Fornication and adultery is the fifth commandment, uh, sixth commandment. No, it's the seventh commandment. I'm sorry, don't commit adultery. So you get the uh, seventh, sixth, and the uh, 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 tenth commandment there. Yeah, not a coincidence, huh? So all, so if you think the commandments are no longer law, right, then all this is okay. Seriously, if you really think the ten commandments are abolished, right, then Jesus, he just spoke this for nothing. He spoke this out of a fate of out of being, right? It, it means nothing because if you think the ten commandments are uh, invalid, yeah. Why would he say this? That's why the Ten Commandments are there, guys, because out of our hearts proceeds evil thoughts. Just from our hearts alone, every day we break the Ten Commandments. And yes, by grace we're saved. And thank God that we could confess our sins at the end of the night and uh, ask for forgiveness. And repent it means do our best to turn away from them, right? Thank God for that. Thank God for salvation. But again, uh, it's not a free pass to sin either. You know what I mean? You got to understand that because people say, well, grace is, um, you can do whatever you want. Literally, I heard pastors say that. No, you can't. You got to turn away from the stuff. You know what I mean? So again, all, all these thing, evil things come from within and defile the man. So again, go back to this verse here. That verse 15, how many times has this been misinterpreted? See, when you let the read description and so on, right? So, uh, again, the people who defend eating pork, right? They, this is one of the key verses they use. Mark 7.15. This is the biggest defense they have, right? But when you read in this context, what's the context? Check that out. That's the context of what he's talking about. Whole different view, is it now? So, now if I was to give you, before we start, right? If I was to give you just one verse, verse 15, right? If I was to give a hundred of you guys this one verse, right? We're going to have 99 to 100 different interpretations of that one verse, right? Or I could sell you on it. Say, you know what? This says we could eat anything we want, right? And by the sounds of it, it sounds like it, absolutely, right? But when you read it in this context, it's not really talking that balanced food. It's talking about what's coming from the heart. That's the, the context of this. That's why Jesus just drilled his own apostles and says, listen, I, you don't understand this? Then he went on to further explanation of this, uh, of this um, parable. So just a little uh, notes for you guys, because you've got to run into people all the time that think the commandments are abolished and it's okay to eat um, you know, pork and everything else, right? We've all ate unclean stuff, you know what I mean? Absolutely, you know what I mean? But we repent from it, whatever the case, you know what I mean? But it doesn't give you permission to do that. That's not what that verse meant. It's talking about what comes from the heart. Right? So anyway, in verse 24, And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. So he went to this house and he... Yeah, he just wanted to go in that secret without anybody knowing it because the multitudes everywhere he went. He was like, imagine like, um, uh, I don't know how to compare this, like the most famous rock star or something, right? Uh, walking around your town that everybody knows, yeah. They're going to mob him. 
In a good way, though. You know what I mean? But um, that's how the fame of Jesus was. So he tried to hide in his house. But anyway, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, which was possessed, that means, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. So the woman was a Greek and uh, I can't pronounce that, Sephronian by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. So this is a Greek woman that had a daughter that was possessed. He came and fell to Jesus' feet. And besought him, that was asking him, hey, could you help me? But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not to meet uh, to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And don't worry, this explains what that means, right? And she answered him and said unto him, Yes, Lord, let yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of the, do uh, out of the daughter. So for us, if you just read this verse on its own, right, uh, what is he talking about? Uh, talk about the possessed people. Talk about food falling onto the floor, the dogs. But Jesus said, uh, you know, <laughs> said unto her, for that, go on, you know, said unto her, for the saying goes thy way. The devil is gone out of the daughter. So instantly said, she's, the devil's gone. He, he rebuked the do devil out of the daughter. And she didn't even have to be there. And when the woman was come to a house, she found the devil gone out of her daughter, laid upon the bed. So check that out, right? She went to you know seek Jesus, this Greek woman, right? Now her daughter wasn't with her. Then she felt Jesus fell on the street and said, Listen, I need help, Lord. My daughter's possessed. And Jesus told her, Go home. She's okay. The devil's gone. And she went to her house and found, oh yeah, the devil, uh, she wasn't possessed no more. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee and through the midst of the coast of the Decapolis. And they bring unto him one of the deaf, a person that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. So you had a person that was deaf, obviously, and somebody couldn't speak right. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And he, looking up to heaven, he signed uh, and said unto him, uh, Ephia, that is, be opened. And straight away his ears were opened, and a string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. Okay, sorry, this is one person. I thought it was two different people. This is one person that was deaf and couldn't speak right. So Jesus healed uh, his ears from the hair and fixed his tongue so he could speak right. And he charged them that they should not tell no man, but the more he charged them, the much more of the great deal they published it. So if you haven't noticed already through the Matthew series and now through the Mark series here, Every time Jesus did something for somebody, he told them, be quiet about it. Just go. Don't go publicizing it everywhere. Don't go yelling in the streets, you know, publishing it. And they did exactly the opposite, you know what I mean? They jumped up, oh, Jesus, heal me. Uh, after Jesus told them just to be quiet about it, you know what I mean? So, and that's a common theme, you know what I mean? So, in the last verse here, and they were beyond measure astonished, saying, he has done all these things well. He makes both the deaf hear and the dumb to speak. That's amazing. So here, yeah, after he told them, hey, chill out, don't tell anybody, right? And of course, they went and run through the streets, and everybody was astonished. And they, especially the people who knew this man, that you know knew he was deaf, knew he could speak right. And now he's like, he could hear people and he could speak well. And people who were beyond a measure of astonishment over this. It's an amazing chapter, it really is. And uh, just like the awesome works that Jesus did.
Yeah, I mean, imagine that though. I mean, like even though he's got in the flesh, but this, you know, he got no rest. <laughs> Everywhere he went, day and night. You know, what I mean, multitudes of people. Imagine like you're you're sitting there for hours helping people, right? You turn around, there's multitudes more, and multitudes after that behind him. People were possessed with devils. People were um, sick, had certain diseases, had certain impalements, and all that other stuff. Just over and over and over again. That's what Jesus does for us. And now him in the spirit, you know what I mean? He could do, all we have to do is pray to him right now. And ask us uh, ask him to heal us. But more it's a more of a spiritual thing today. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying he can't heal you regularly, like like physically. He can, you know what I mean? And like he says, asking you shall receive, but you gotta have faith. You gotta believe it, it will happen. So that concludes uh, chapter 7, yeah, which is awesome chapter. So we always tell you to uh, trust the plan, guys, and that's the Bible. And don't take my word or anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourself. And uh, again, after this is over here, I want you to read it for yourself. Go through it again. If I miss something or you think something should be added or whatever the case, questions, comments, or concerns, put it in the comment section. And you'll see the live chat here during the uh, presentation of the premiere. Um, engage in that and, uh, and you know have fellowship with the people which is awesome. But if you got qu comments, questions, concerns for me, please, um, after the premiere, or if you watch it later, whatever, just put them in the comment section, and I'll get to you. So that being said, guys, um, check out nystv.org, and if you want a free subscription to them, everything is in the description here. Um, Dan the Man, no case one word, is a promo code to get 30 days free, no obligation, nystv.org, thousands of videos on demand, Tons of spiritual warfare, documentaries, and much more. Awesome stuff, man. So follow me on truthradioshow.com. That's a one-stop pub right there. My website for all my social media platforms, my Rumble, my YouTubes, um, all that stuff. My new show, my spiritual warfare shows, and all that good stuff. So please follow us there. And thank you for tuning in to uh, the book of Mark, chapter 7, for our comprehensive study. We'll see you for chapter 8. God bless, shalom, and you are the resistance.